Welcome to a new follow-up video. In a previous video, I showed how I repaired and restored those two fantastic uh, high-voltage power supplies. And I'm so happy about it. I really, really want to make a nice, good-looking case for them. So I went to one of my local friends, uh, Peter, who happens to own exactly the same type of power supply and his unit is the standalone version with this nice case and it's of course a quite a simple design of a case made with a an aluminium bent plate with some holes and the bottom here is quite simple too so i think i want to do a copy of this design and I want to make it as close as possible. So my first idea is to make all the measurements and see uh, what to do about all this. So let's do all the measurements real fast. <laughs> I need to go pick up <laughs> my big one here because you can't measure these things with super high accuracy. Yeah, with the small ones, you know. So I think those are all the measurements just for the bottom plate. Now I'll try and uh, put this into my design tool. So after a few minutes of uh, dialing in all my measurements, uh, I now have a uh, really uh, nice and uh, fine sketch here and we can finish the sketch and we can extrude it and all that fantastic things. And that is our bottom plate. Fantastic. And here is the lid. That was a lot easier. Uh, actually, we only got two holes like that and a little. Yes, I, of course, had to uh, put in the bend exactly as it is in my original part. However, I feel they did it a little bit sharper than this but i kind of forgive them on that they're just using a regular um bending machine and not a, uh, a like a uh, bending machine that can uh, handle the different uh, radius uh, bends so here's uh, what i did i went into a pcb way and then i uh, uploaded my two uh, step files and uh, then it was super easy just to uh, to order these things i uh, you can choose the delivering time, processing time, shipment time, and all that kind of stuff. And uh, you can even view your order in uh, 3D. So uh, I think that's a pretty good uh, website. I am not sponsored or supported by PCBWay. I just uh, wanted to use these. This is just a, a random uh, selection of a place that can do stuff like this. And uh, my total was $208, including shipment and everything. So now I just got my parts from China. And let's see how they match up with the uh, measurements and all that. So they sanded the aluminium real nice and all that. So let's see. We got some. This is, of course, the top. But let's see the bottom. So we got those two holes there, and so far that is good. I should probably go and get some screws and see how they match all this, right? This is just amazing. See? You just finger screw those. Oh, it is so accurate. I mean, there's no slippity slippity. It's just, it's, there's no grip and uh, I am super happy about that. Now let's try the lid, right? And here is the lid. This is definitely what I've been waiting for. The fun thing is uh, one of them, I mean, they sanded a plate with a little mark on it here, but that is on the inside. And on the outside, see, there's absolutely nothing to see, so that is perfectly fine. 
I will of course accept that one because they're gonna get painted anyway, right? The angle here is a little bit to the open side, but that is um, actually what I wanted, you know, if I if I have to choose between two open or two closed like like that, right? So this one, this is definitely difficult to uh, to video, but this one goes a little bit out here in compared to here, right? Let's try and see if it's uh, fitting here. Hoo -hoo. Look at that! So let's try and be real difficult here, right? So if I push this... I don't know if you can see this, but it's so much in the middle of the hole. I cannot find anything to complain about. Did I really measure this so crazy accurate? Oh, it really, really fits so, so good. Look at the details here. I'm quite happy about that. The only thing, because the sides here are like a tiny, tiny bit out here and here, right? So when I tighten the screws, you see what happens? Then I have a tiny little quarter of a millimeter or yeah, just a pa paper thickness or something like that. It's really, really nothing. So let's, um, let's compare this with the original once again. We got of course a color problem or a color challenge. I think the bend here is very close to the other one. I also think it looks like the material is a little bit thicker, isn't it? I'm very sure I asked about exactly the right thickness. Hmm, that is funny. That is not exactly what I ordered, is it? Why did I screw up the, the thickness? I need to remeasure this and uh, look at my design files. You're probably not going to believe this, but this is the original one. When I put my measure tool here, so it's two point something, that's of course the paint. And if I take the, it's thinner, but, but it really looks, I think it has something to do with the color. Well, well, the thickness is correct. So now there's only one thing left and that is the color. So this is of course the original. And if we try and measure, hello. If we try and measure the color, I need to hold this. So the color is Pantone 419C. That is what we need to aim for, all right? So now I need to go and uh, talk to the paint experts. So I just came out of the local uh, pro shop of painting and goody goody thingies and they tested my unit and they, they are using RAL colors and they mixed this little buckets and they put in all the, the full recipe of the correct colors and everything here is on this a little bit of milliliters and all that. So it's going to be exciting to see if it works. So the first thing I want to do is to make a little tester of the color. So I had the idea I could just put it here on the inside, maybe make it really, really thin. And then just wait for tomorrow and see I should probably wipe this. This is way too thick. Well, let's inspect the first layer versus the original. So the original is very, very smooth. Of course, you can see the scratches and all that. But what I'm looking at is the, the paint quality is a lot more smooth if we compare it to, um, to mine. See, I get... I get these tiny, tiny little dots. It's not like it's ugly or anything. It's just different. And this is my very, very first try with uh, <laughs> compressed air and a 
spray gun. And I honestly don't know what I'm doing to... Yeah. See? I used... A, I think I used a little bit too thin layer. Uh, oops, see? I need to clean this a little bit. And also, if we look at the bottom part, I think it's better to put it on a little bit too thin compared to uh, too thick. So you can see the edge... And I didn't put enough paint on the edge. But for a first try, I don't think it's too bad. You can see the thin, thin scratches. I sanded this uh, a little bit. And uh, that is visible through the paint. So um, that reveals the paint is very thin. So yeah, I want to try and give this another layer tomorrow. But I'm uh, quite all right. Happy about this and the color nearly match depending on the angle and the light and all that. Not too bad. So after yesterday's first layer of paint, I realized I really need to add a water separator between um, my compressed air and the paint gun because uh, compressed air actually contains a tiny little droplets of water and that goes in here and it comes out uh, together with the paint and this way it will ruin my paint. So yeah, I will try and assemble all this and let's see if the last and <laughs> yeah, the final layer will be perfect. That's my idea. So that was real easy. Now I got a tiny little water separator I can plug in on all sorts of devices and I'm quite happy about that. It's of course it adds to this uh, project but I think I'll put this on my uh, general tools, tools account <laughs> so, so it's not going on the project uh, together with all the other tools obviously. I'm a little bit sad that the thread here on the on the input is designed so it's uh, so I need all these extra tools. It could have been cool if that thread was actually up here and it goes directly in here and then you take this out and put this under here right but that is absolutely stupid way to design stuff so you need to buy as many additional fittings as possible and doubling or tripling the cost of stuff like this so here is what i do i lift up the object i want to paint because air needs to go all the way around it freely and good otherwise it really doesn't work if you put stuff here flat you're not going to be able to paint the bottom edge here and uh, I used a piece of wood for testing and uh, for checking it's going to work and I adjust it so that I get very very little paint and much more air so it's I can go back and forth a million times and then slowly see the paint build up so that was a lot of fun see I used not even a half a, a bucket for all my experience and there's a tiny little bucket here and uh, I only painted stuff on the outside not the inside as well I'm quite happy about the results for a first timer <laughs> I think I get exactly the look that I like and uh, about this water Remover thing. You can see the tiny droplets in there, right? And this would have gone directly into my paint job like it did yesterday, and that was terrible. So I'm ready to do the assembly, and uh, of course, I want to inspect much deeper how is the performance of the paint. So, this is the second layer. And it's just completely uniform. I mean, for a first try, I'm quite happy. It's not as super smooth as the original, so I don't know exactly how they did that. Because it needs to be sprayed on somehow, right? Oh yeah, I also had to purchase a little bit of extra things. I go for um, some feet that's a little bit higher. This way 
air will go in through the bottom holes. You can see here this is the original feed, and this will be my feed. So I don't think this will work very well. And that was why I made those tiny little holes here for my screws. So after a few extra days of waiting, I am now in the final assembly process here. I'm really happy about the results. And of course everything fits perfecto. <laughs> See the fuses in that hole, that's pretty neat. I made one stupid mistake when I earlier said that I didn't paint the inside of everything, right? See, <laughs> here is the problem. Of course you can see the a little bit of the inside here, right? And also this is the inside here of the of the top part. So, I just took a little paint brush and just painted it like that because I cleaned up everything and I packed everything away, so this is just uh, how I solved that little problem here. See, here's a little paint tester. But now I am done with my stuff and uh, I am really, really happy about the result. And uh, I would like to end this video and say thank you very much for watching. And I hope you, uh, you think that maybe you can do it even better. Next time there is something you want to uh, do with the case and painting and bending and designing and all that, whatever. So thank you and bye bye.